Welcome inside our SI.com studios for this week's video mailbag, where we take your questions via email and the Twitter using the hashtag Mannix Mailbag. Question number one, should Kevin Love stay in Cleveland and do they need him? His stock is going down and he is underutilized. Oh, the weekly Kevin Love question that makes very little sense. Kevin Love is still an elite player. Yes, he's having some problems integrating himself in Cleveland, which prefers him to be more of a stretch four while he prefers to play more in the paint. But I don't think his skills have diminished at all. And I think just letting him walk away for nothing would be a huge mistake for the Cavaliers. Yes, there's a massive financial investment to make in Kevin Love and Tristan Thompson, who could himself make north of $13 million per year. But if the Cavaliers hope to be the kind of contenders that LeBron James expects them to be for the next four or five years, they have to bring back Kevin Love. And if they don't, they've got to trade him for somebody that's just as good. Question number two, what West teams are the biggest obstacle for number one seed Golden State in the playoffs? Well, the absence of Kevin Durant has taken away one major obstacle for Golden State because if that wound up being the number one versus number eight seed matchup, I would have legitimately have picked Oklahoma City to win that one. Now, you're looking at a field that has a lot of beatable teams out there. But if you're asking me to pick one team that could knock off the Warriors, I'm going with Old Reliable, San Antonio. The team has been to -to back-to-back finals and the defending champion. Lo and behold, and I know this is shocking, the Spurs are starting to get it together and starting to look like the old Spurs team towards the end of this season. Kawhi Leonard's playing great basketball, Tony Parker's getting healthy, and Greg Popovich is setting the rotations up so that these guys are healthy and rested come the playoffs. The Spurs are the one team in the back half of the Western Conference playoff bracket that has no problem going on the road and winning games. So if they have to play Golden State in a conference semifinals or a conference finals, I don't think they'd have any problems going into San Francisco and winning one of those games. They remain the toughest matchup for Golden State. Question number three, will the Thunder ever admit that trading James Harden was really dumb? I'm sure Sam Presti would love to hear that he's really dumb, given his track record as a general manager. The answer to that question is no. The Thunder will never admit that. But the truth behind it is, I do think the Thunder underestimated what the salary cap was going to look like in the years after James Harden was traded. They believed that signing Harden to a four-year max contract would have put them too deep into luxury tax territory and destroyed their financial flexibility down the road. It certainly would have affected their financial flexibility, but I think right now the Thunder probably wish that they had Harden, Westbrook, and Durant on the roster. I think all the other moves they've made have been great. Ennis Cantor, terrific trade. Steven Adams, terrific draft pick. This Thunder team has a great track record for bringing in top talent. But when they look back in the history of this team, I do think they'll wonder if trading James Harden was a big mistake. Question number four, after playing so well with Sean Livingston last season, Why hasn't a Darren Williams and Jarrett Jack backcourt worked for the Nets? Well, you're talking about two different players here. Jarrett Jack, a terrific scorer off the bench, a former sixth man of the year candidate, but he doesn't do defensively what Sean Livingston could do for the Nets last year. You put Livingston and Darren Williams in the backcourt together, Livingston could guard point guards, he could guard small forwards. There was just so much versatility with that team. Moreover, Livingston is more of a passing point guard than Jarrett Jack is, make it that much easier to play him alongside Williams, who's a scoring point guard. The Nets knew at the end of last season that losing Livingston was going to hurt, and I think you're seeing the result of that right now. Question number five, do you see the Celtics making the playoffs? If so, how much noise could they make? You know, it's really hard to predict right now exactly who's going to get the final two playoff spots in the Eastern Conference because it is going to come down to -to head-to-head matchups. Boston, Brooklyn, Charlotte, even Miami, these teams that are in the mix that are fighting for those last two spots, when they play each other and they match up, those results are going to go a long way. Boston needs to get Isaiah Thomas healthy though. He's come back from the back injury, a nasty bone bruise, but he hasn't been the same Isaiah Thomas we saw when he came over from Phoenix. If he can spend these last two or three weeks looking like the old Isaiah Thomas, being a fourth quarter scorer, getting to the free throw line for Brad Stevens' group, I think the Celtics have enough firepower to get one of those last two spots. Once they get in there, though, I think you're talking about a first-round wipeout. No matter who Boston plays in that first round, whether it's Atlanta or if it's Cleveland, both those teams would be huge favorites against the Celtics. They would be huge favorites against any team that comes into those last two spots in the East. And I think regardless of who it is, it's going to be a four- or five-game series at best. 
That's it for this week's video mailbag. Remember, submit your questions on Twitter using the hashtag ManixMailbag.